Do you ever see a trailer or something for a movie and like within the first 10 seconds, like you already know you're gonna be strapped in, ready to go. A horror rom-com with Cole Sprouse playing a zombie? Say no more, I'm there. Diablo Cody's really had a bit of a renaissance over the last few years. Like she hasn't actually done a whole lot, but with Jennifer's body gaining a huge cult following recently, just the name Diablo Cody commands respect and interest, no questions asked. She kind of has like a David Lynch thing going on, you know? And her latest movie is Lisa Frankenstein, directed by Zelda Williams, interestingly enough. That's a heck of a combo right there. And like I said, everything I read and saw about this movie, I was like, Oh, this was made for me. So come on kids, let's take a walk and check out Lisa Frankenstein. But before that really quick, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. If you would perhaps be interested in bringing your own zombie boyfriend back to life, well, I can't really help you, but if you want to learn how to draw and procreate or open your own Etsy store from start to finish, let me tell you, Skillshare is probably what you're looking for. But here's the thing that I'm sure a lot of you worry about, which is where do I even start? And more than that, where do I go? I mean, sure, there's a lot of resources out there on how to learn stuff. You can learn a lot right here on YouTube, but you got to find the right playlist. Are all the videos in the playlist? Is this information still Still even accurate and relevant? Well, Skillshare has the answer to all of this with what they call learning pads. Learning pads are where they've bundled several classes together all on the same topic to cover first starting out as a novice and then going all the way to professional skill level and everything in between. Let's say you're thinking about opening an Etsy store. On the learning path, they teach you how to even start thinking about your shop, then how to build it, how to take photos for whatever you're selling, and now suddenly you've got an Etsy store that's better than like 90% of all the other ones. Or let's say you love watching YouTube and you think that you'd be pretty good at video editing. Well, they have a whole learning path just for how to do pretty much everything in the DaVinci Resolve, which is quickly becoming the go-to editing software these days, because let me tell you, Adobe Premiere is kind of... <laughs> <laughs> So if this sounds interesting to you, guess what? The first 500 people who become Skillshare members using my link will get their first membership month completely free. You can do both of these learning paths I just mentioned completely free. You literally have nothing to lose. So click my link down below and get creative today. Okay, back to the show. The movie starts out with our main character, Lisa Swallows, and her absurdly gigantic soap dispenser as she gets ready to go to a party with her stepsister, Taffy. I don't think that blushes your shade, Lisa. I'll just stay home. No! This is the first critical rager of the year. It's compulsory. And you know what your doctor said? You need socialization. <laughs> Socialize? Gross. No, thank you. <laughs> now, as you can probably tell, Lisa's not really one of those talk to people kind of people, you know, like me, where I'm always like, okay, so I know I'm literally about to die. I got maybe four minutes left, but like, do you think maybe I could just text the hospital instead? But hey, maybe doing some tanning will help her feel better somehow for some reason. I'm really sorry you got electrocuted, Lisa. <laughs> Sorry about the whole almost dying thing, you know, that would have been a bummer. Anyway, so on the way to the party, Lisa and Taffy get to talking about stuff girls always love talking about, you know, like who do you have a crush on and why can't the men from Lord of the Rings be real or what's that acid called that they use to dissolve the body in Breaking Bad? You know, just girl stuff. Are you hot for anyone? So Lisa, Lisa. Michael Trey. I don't know what that is. He's the editor-in-chief of the Grab. The Lit Mac. High School Literary Magazine. Oh, of course he is. Of course you'd be into the school newspaper guy. What about the anime guy in the back whose mom cuts his hair and who makes his own homemade Sailor Moon t-shirts, huh? No one ever talks about him. It's probably gonna be like a Z-list YouTuber one day, okay? Maybe give him a chance. Does he lunch on or off campus? Oh. BK or White Castle? Neither. Does he have more of a basketball bod or a football bod? He doesn't play sports. He's cerebral. The uh, heck does that even mean? We also learned that Lisa loves to hang out in the local graveyard in her spare time. <laughs> How quirky and relatable. And she particularly loves this one specific grave for whatever reason. I think it's really peaceful and quiet. I have a favorite. They tend to his grave, leave him flowers. It was my mom's. I wanted you to have it. A young man. Well, Jughead Jones, we meet again. Totally unrelated here, but like, is it weird that I kind of miss Riverdale? So finally they get to the party and Lisa's all like, gag me with a spoon. Surprise, baby. Woo, woo. Yes, sir. Oh my God, Steve, bag your face. Can we bring back the phrase bag your face? Cause like, that's just the best line ever. But then what do you know? A certain Michael Trent shows up and starts being all, <laughs> you know how guys are. You're looking to fade out the ethanol's inside. What? The booze. It's in the house. Yeah, I think that my stepsister brought most of it. Lisa Swallows. Michael. 
Trent. Okay, I'm sorry. There is no way some dude this hot is in charge of the school newspaper, okay? You kidding me right now? Come on, Diablo Cody, Zelda Williams. Psh, you ain't slick. I'm on to you. Oh, hey, what's up, Lisa? I'm just over here reading books and having feelings, but like not in a cringy way, though. <laughs> anyway, so while this is all happening, Taffy is telling a bunch of other girls about Lisa's dark, tragic backstory. Like two years ago, Lisa was home alone with her mom. And this psycho broke in. With like an axe and everything. Axe murdered her mom. What about her dad? My mom met him six months after the murder and they got engaged and married real quick. Anyway, so after talking to Michael Trent for a while, Lisa takes a drink of some burr and what do you know, there was some kind of something in it and now she's stuck being all like this. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay. Uh, it's, it's me, it's Doug, your lab partner. I hate parties. <laughs> Personally, I'd rather catch a flick or something than watch a bunch of cheerleaders get blasted. Get what? So this Doug guy, okay, unassuming as he is, he takes Lisa to a bedroom so she can relax and they can talk and she can be in a safe environment and then he can put his hand on her boob. Oh, come on, dog! All you have to do is sit there and do nothing, okay? Maybe a week from now she wouldn't let you touch all the booby you wanted. Come on, man, why you gotta be like this? Anyway, so Lisa kind of freaks out and runs away. There's this crazy storm going on while she makes her way to the graveyard. Oh. I wish I was with you. And then she walks home, she has this insane fever dream, she smashes a mirror, so much happens, let me tell you, she has a heck of a night. But then she wakes up the next morning and her stepmom is rather perturbed. Lisa, Lisa. <laughs> hey, my mom's having a cow about the bathroom. You should probably get up. What happened last night? Your knees. I fell. <laughs> sure, babe, me too. How did this movie bomb at the box office? Like, we do not deserve nice things. So here we get to meet Lisa's totally normal stepmom, Janet. Did you smash the mirror in the bathroom? Last night, I... Your dad wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt, but... I knew. I always know. I'm an IP. Intuitive person. Mm-hmm. You ever notice how, like, being an empath or whatever is basically shorthand for I'm the worst human being you'll ever meet? Dale, you need to stop munching the grape nuts and be a father right now. Your daughter has a taste for vandalism. First, it was my precious moments cake stand. Oh no, not the precious moments cake stand! But yeah, so Lisa has to apologize and clean up the bathroom because there's no way she could tell him what really happened. Parents just don't understand. Mom, be nice. But I will not coddle her. No one coddled me when my dad blew up in Da Nang. And that is why I am the way I am today. That's a good point. You know, this dude has played the same dad for like 20 years. And like, hey, I get it. You know, he's got that perfect, like, unavailable, disaffected dad thing going on. Good on you for finding your niche, sir. Now, right that moment on the news, we also learned that the graveyard that Lisa likes to hang out in or whatever, like, it was struck by lightning during that big storm that I mentioned before. I'm here on the scene at the former site of the Bachelors Grove Cemetery in Bremer Park, where a neglected monument was recently struck <laughs> by lightning. Hmm, I wonder if this might become important later. Anyway, so Lisa has to go to work where she's a seamstress at like a dry cleaner type place. And guess who shows up again? Just out of nowhere, swinging that Adam's apple to and fro. Hello. I feel like I want to apologize for what may have happened last night. Oh, hey guys, what's up? It's just me, the, lo the local uh, school newspaper editor-in-chief who also looks like Brad Pitt from Fight Club. <laughs> Whatever, no big deal. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Do you two know each other from school? I didn't know Lisa had any friends. I can always count on her to work on Saturdays because she can't get a date. <laughs> yeah, it's probably because she's so flat-chested. <laughs> what? 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 What the heck, man? Anyway, so that night, Lisa's family goes out to a movie, so she's home all by herself. And what are the chances an axe murderer shows up and breaks into her house? Hate it when that happens, am I right? He chases Lisa around the house for a while. One thing leads to another, and Lisa realizes that he's not an axe murderer after all. He's just a zombie that came back to life somehow. False alarm, guys. That's my dad's shoe phone. 
And he got it for free with a subscription to Sports Illustrated. I love how he's like chasing her around the house. And then once she finds out he's a zombie, she's just like super chill about the whole thing, you know? I thought you were gonna murder me or something, but turns out you're just a dead guy come back to life. So, <laughs> whoops, my bad. Now we come to find out in a shocking plot twist that this zombie guy is actually that Jughead Jones dude that she was totally crushing on earlier. You. Why are you here? Okay. I get it. When I said I wished I was with you, I meant I wished I was in the, the ground dead because life sucks and people are jerk offs. I didn't mean that I wanted to be with you. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. You got yourself a magical dead boyfriend and you don't even want him? You have any idea how many people have been dreaming of their own magic dead boyfriend for decades now? A literal embodiment of all the things on your dream guy checklist and you don't even care? So she takes him upstairs to give him a shower and get him all cleaned up. Mm. This is Taffy Station. It's for beer sluts. I'm gonna turn on the college station. It's for people like us. With feelings. Uh oh, she's one of those NPR girls. <laughs> Taylor Swift, more like Ira Glass, am I right, guys? But now, you see, because of the whole being chased by a zombie thing that just happened, the house is kind of a mess when the family comes back from the movies. And long story short, Lisa's stepmom has had enough with Lisa and her irrational lashing out hoodness ship and decides it's finally time to put her away in the loony bin where she belongs. I talked to the head of the juvenile program at Serenity Manor, and you are being admitted for your own good and my safety inpatient. <laughs> Lockdown. <gasps> special socks. <gasps> oh no, not the special grippy socks. Where a disturbed person like you belongs. Wow. Whoops. And then, of course, naturally, he cuts off her ear so Lisa can sew it onto his head, and then she electrocutes him in the tanning bed from earlier, and now his ear works, and he's like 20% hotter. <gasps> Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? But here's the thing. So now that Lisa has had a taste of the whole murder thing, uh, turns out she has an unquenchable thirst for blood and vengeance. <laughs> Just girly things. So of course, she also has to dress like Helen Bonham Carter in every movie she's ever been in. But you know, I do gotta say though, between this and Stranger Things, like the modern day interpretation of 80s fashion is just, it's, it's so, I mean, <laughs> like just give me some big hair and thick eyeliner and take me in your arms, I'm yours. So now that she's found the new hobby, her next target is that Doug guy from the party. And so what do you know, they end up murdering him too and they cut off his hand and sew it onto the zombie guy. They put him in the hot Gaiatron 5000 and look at him now. But yeah, so now Lisa and the zombie dude are like best buds. Don't feel bad about what we did. Janet was gonna put me in a psych ward. You saved me. And Doug, that hand was gonna do terrible things. Look, I gotta go change my pad and you gotta get upstairs for the night cause they're gonna be home soon. Now, everything seems great so far. I mean, her evil stepmom is gone. The guy who did the Tony Hawk melon grab, he's gone. But golly gee whiz, don't you know, people start to wonder about where did Janet go? Why hasn't she returned any calls yet? Also, people saw Doug and Lisa heading to the graveyard before he disappeared. Because we have multiple witnesses saying they saw a young man, the description of Doug, at Bruce Lake. One witness said he saw a girl with your description. There's lots of girls who look like me. Specifically mentioning someone with a funny walk. So, you know. That's kind of inconvenient. So Lisa's kind of starting to feel like the walls are closing in on her and she realizes that someone's gonna figure it all out sooner or later. So of course, there's only one thing on her mind right now, which is losing her virginity. Michael Trent, I'm gonna do it. I mean, we don't know what's gonna happen. We killed two people. I could get the clink for life or the electric chair. That's like a tanning bed, but for criminals. I'm just gonna do it tomorrow. I'm just gonna offer my body to him. And I, you know, I think it's a pretty good idea. <laughs> You know, I gotta respect this girl's priorities, okay? Like you're about to be murdered by a serial killer or something and you're like, wait, please, before you do that, let me find that one porn video I saw back in 2009. I've been looking for years. Also like real talk for a second, but how is Catherine Newton not doing like 10 movies a year? She's so good at everything she's in. So Lisa's plan is to literally just walk into Michael's house and get him to do a whole lot of something, I guess. Like she just literally walks right in and hopes for the best. You're just so cute, sweet, pure. I'm so dark and screwed up. Let's go. Oh my god, Lisa! You have everything! You could help me have this one thing! No, but like seriously though, editor of the school magazine? This dude with these boobies? Uh, does he have a basketball body or a football body? Neither, he's cerebral. Excuse me, ma'am? But yeah, so Lisa's kind of upset about all this. I, I don't have feelings for you like that. Because I'm not sweet 
and simple like her? You like cool movies and music and stuff, but only for you. You want to be the smart one who likes cool stuff, and you don't want your girlfriend to like cool stuff. Yeah, you like have the same interests as me, and you're like nice to me sometimes, but you don't want to smash? How could you lead me on like that? Now, the zombie guy also follows her into this house for whatever reason, maybe because he likes her. <laughs> And when he sees how upset she is, he murders Michael just right there in the bed and cuts off his <laughs> And so the movie ends with Lisa sewing that onto him, and then they do the devil's tango. And then she decides that the only way she could get out of this on her own terms is to, uh... Uh... Let's see here. Rub out? Nope, that's different. Uh... She exterminates herself on purpose. Wink. Wink. By using the tanning bed set to the highest setting, which makes it just explode in the flames. And that's the end of the movie, except for this one last little scene at the very, very end. And your brow, more than the sky, this azure Italy. Mary dear, come to me soon. I am not well whilst thou art far, as sunset to the spherid moon, as twilight to the western star. So yeah. What the heck? But you know, jokes aside though, I gotta say, I'm always one of those people who's whining about how like, why can't we get more original movies instead of just remakes and reboots and sequels all the time? <laughs> so I have to give credit where it's due. You know, the movie is insane and incredible <laughs> in every sense of the word. But I'll tell you, this movie deserves so much more than it got in theaters. At the very least, it's a unique original movie, so I gotta respect it for that. It's like a little bit Jennifer's body mixed with little bit Edward Scissorhands, kinda, it's set in the 80s. Like literally the most perfect movie, you know what I mean? If you like horror and or rom-coms, you gotta check this one out. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please watch another one, because that's how the algorithm works. So click on this one that's being recommended to you right now, right here on the screen. It actually helps a lot if you do that, because like that's how YouTube knows that my videos are worth caring about. Also, if you have any movies or TV shows you'd like to recommend, send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com, and I'll put them on my absurdly long list of movies that I need to get to at some point. Anyway, hope I made your day a little bit better, and I'll see you all next time.